This one will work both ways. But uh, let's see, what do I want to do with this one here? So I'm gonna make a copy first. Um, probably, probably gonna make two just in case I want to do some other stuff in here. So what you're gonna do here is first uh, you're you're gonna desaturate. I'll decide uh, how I want to do my black and white here. do something with uh, some contrast here do the luminosity so then from here you add a layer mask and uh, the la layer masks are really neat um, it's kind of hard for me to explain but uh, it's kind of neat when, when you when you see what I'm aiming for it's uh, really So the, I have this layer mask set to white full opacity. So if you add black to the layer, it, um, it it's acting it's acting like a, a selective um, it's it's like a selective alpha channel. You can alpha out the areas that you don't want showing. So I'll I'll just show you real quick how that works. So I get all this crap set up again. It, it always switches to, to default settings uh, to every restart. And, uh, let's see. Black. Switch this over to here. All right, watch this magic right here. So this is this is a layer that's underneath. So you do this, and now you're you're erasing just this part here. Instead of it's a non-destructive way to uh, erase stuff and to show what's underneath. You can make some really cool effects by doing this. So. But what I'm going to do in this case is, uh, well, I'm going to I'm going to decide on a color here. So we got a purple theme going on here, but I might want to uh, change the colors on it. I could do red or blue or something like that. So why don't we why don't we start with a, a blue shade? ones that I've uh, worked through that I can kind of work with that as I go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to going to add another layer. It's going to be the foreground color. I'll put that in between. And what you do with this layer here is you you uh, change the property of it to uh, we're going to go with soft light. Now you see what it did there? Some pretty cool shit, isn't it? So now what you do here, um, since you have this color on top of this here, go zoom in like this, and you're going to get what's underneath all of this here. So paint in your black, and you get this neat little effect here. But what if you just want to go with a, a straight color? So all you got to do here is it, the layer underneath also has to be black and white. So go back down to desaturate, I picked luminosity. Now everything is blue. And since she has brown eyes, this might be a little tough to uh, get some good color in. But, uh, We'll work through it as we go. Uh, 
And uh, don't worry about the reflection, we'll, we'll fix that as well. And the beauty of this is if you mess up and you go, oh crap, let's go back to white. Done. <laughs> this is also good if, uh, let's say, let's say you're trying to follow a line. Let's say I'm trying to go like right around here at the, uh, the edge of the nose and I go over a little bit like that. Then I can switch over to white. And then I can, I can knock that back like this. So. Gives you a little more control over uh, things, so. But uh, we're gonna, we're gonna start with a blue and I'll start messing around with colors after. Which are not quite as vivid as I would like them to be. Hi there. Yeah, you missed uh, yesterday too. Well, I didn't stream yesterday. I had to, uh, I had to fix things. It's uh, the thing about um, it's, it's the thing about uh, fixing things for a living. You uh, think you can fix all kinds of things, and uh, you know sometimes you do pretty good. Sometimes. Uh, you find out you're out of your league and you hire somebody else to do it. But uh, I, I had to spend some of my time off yesterday actually fixing crap. This might be a case where I have to knock back some stuff. Actually, you know, you know what I could do. Is this camera big enough for you? I can just. I did this before. I, I pointed the camera down to the uh, the tablet so you could see what I'm doing with the tablet. Maybe we'll do that. There are some people that stream like this. Let's see, let me make sure it doesn't pitch over. I see. That's that's what I suspected. That the whole frickin' camera is lopsided. So uh, yeah, I was I was fixing some crap yesterday. The summertime weather in Florida is bad enough, but uh, we've been getting an amount of storms and rain but, uh, when you want to say go work on something in your car you don't have a fucking garage well guess what it's raining three hours you have to wait for the weather to break till you can get started on it but I got it done And this uh, this kind of stuff affords you a lot of control. So if you find you're like kind of going off the rails a little bit, you can always knock it back. Works very well for that sort of thing. I should turn on smooth stroke here. Let's see, go somewhere. This is the, the secret to uh, nice straight lines in uh, digital work. Gosh, it sounds so empty. Music. But this is a, a stabilizer. If you 
you watch really carefully, you notice how there's a little bit of a lag in there as I'm uh, as I'm painting in. It's the stabilizer working. Oh man, I tried uh, using stabilization uh, on my dual core. That was a freaking disaster. It was lagging so bad. It's, it's atrocious. This, as long as you don't have it turned up way high, it works out pretty well. Let's see. Kind of going off the rails there a little bit, but does it look okay? Looks all right. I don't know if I'm going to do just one color or do like two or three. But, um, I've been uh, I've been doing this kind of thing for a little over a week now, just kind of messing around with stuff that I've already done and doing this kind of color work. See how the stabilizer really see that single stroke right there. Of course, it's a really awkward angle. GIMP doesn't have uh, the ability to uh, rotate the entire canvas. It really should have that feature. It can do almost everything that Photoshop can. But, uh, you can't rotate a damn canvas. That would be really helpful to do that. Instead, i got to be a contortionist to some of these strokes here. This isn't too bad, but then you get into parts that, that aren't natural. So the inclination would be just, you know, just rotate it. Can't really do that with GIMP. Kind of leaning awkwardly right now. Get everything to work properly. Um, again, I'm working working with uh, with a special special layer here. It's a layer mask. You can find tutorials on the web, and if uh, you know, if for some reason you can't find anything. Uh, specifically related to GIMP, I just look up a Photoshop tutorial. The terms are pretty much the same. It's just uh, you got to know where to find the stuff. That part's a little different, but as far as the techniques and stuff, it's it's the same thing. I can I can turn that off now. Quite that for ellipses. Oh yeah, I just saw that. I mean, I I I got distracted with Nightbot, but yeah. Yep. <laughs> you notice a lot of my girls have that kind of quality. I mean, I I know uh, uh vampires aren't as popular as zombies are now, but uh, you know these things go in cycles and. Uh, it's always something that that'll kind of stick around. Got some jewelry. I do that with the the hair in the way. So I make the hair the same color too. That's going to be a little tough when you have uh, a 3D rendering with transparency in here. That can be a uh, can be a little tough to work out. Turn the stabilizer back on. Drop it 
drop frames. Hmm. That might be a weekend thing. But uh, yeah, there's there are certain things on the Twitch dashboard that are broken again. Certain functionalities that that I relied on that aren't working now. Not making a good case for yourself there, Twitch. You know you have other streaming platforms that that work. Oh, that's going to be tough. That's going to be a tough one. We're going to go way off the rails here. I wouldn't believe the position I'm in right now just to get this. Stabilizer back on. Yeah, I'm at a really awkward angle, so I'm even having trouble uh, manipulating some of the controls. Thankfully, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. This stuff's really dark. See that? That ain't working out. Go just leave that. It's just not, not enough of that. Just axe it entirely. Oh well, it was a good exercise. Let's see. So we got that. I need some. Just go over this really quick and uh, take a look at it. So what I might have to do is uh, the hair along with it. Just want to be able to tell that uh, everything 
can pretty much see what everything is. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, the render thing, for sure. Um, it's really hard to um, do some of these effects when you're dealing with a, a 3D render because you're 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 dealing with these opacities and stuff. And uh, you know when you're rendering something like this with all kinds of different color in there, it can be tough to resolve something stylized like this. But uh, you know it's it's uh, it's something to do. I had thought about it for a while and kind of kept putting it off because you know when I when I do a render. Um, I already have colors in mind, and I have I have a kind of um sounds a little silly, but a, a vision how I how I want it to look and work out, and uh, color can play a lot into that. So for a long time there, I kind of railed against. Uh, going black and white with the stuff when I already did all the the hard mental work of working out all the colors but um, you know I, I did a couple of filters on Instagram and I uh, kind of liked how they turned out and uh, people liked them and stuff and so well, why don't I start doing this now and then I can uh, sometimes I can work out some uh, color ideas it's been kind of working out I know some people are saying that they like the uh, this black and white stuff better than the color stuff that's it's still um, subjective you know. but, uh, I guess I can kind of see where they're coming from to six one thing I could never uh, quite get a handle on is uh, working with styluses that have buttons on them I, I don't really don't like to use the buttons on them they feel awkward to me sometimes I accidentally hit them and things like that happen so should just deactivate them all together so I hardly ever use them. I think maybe if I work with CSP a little bit more, I'll uh, use those buttons more. But, uh, I forget, nah. I generally don't. Let's see how that looks. That's not too bad. I'm going to want to punch up the color, so. I tell you that that uh, stabilizer can be a real lifesaver. Gosh, I've used blue before. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um. If anybody wants to see exactly what's going on on the, on the right-hand pane or even on the left-hand pane, I can shut off elements. But um, the, ch the chat's uh, fairly see-through, so you can see some of the stuff that's going on. But yeah, if, there, if there's anything you feel like you're missing, let me know. I'll uh, try to point some stuff out. So let's see, there's there's another lock over here I need to do. to kind of 
study that, see what's going on. Okay, so it's going down. Look at this. Okay. There's there's an ear too, so part's gonna have to be feathered. How I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna figure it out. to be a pressure thing. Let's see. Basic dynamics. Want to do that to do see how the pressure is. Don't seem quite sensitive enough. Well, I, I won't mess around with it too much. Sometimes you can run into problems with that. Awfully quiet, huh? <laughs> Awfully quiet. See, cause there, there are other, there are other techniques I can play here too. If I turn this back off, turn the dynamics off, I can actually soften this up too. So I can do stuff like this.
really kind of soften the edge of that. Stabilizer is still on. Off a little bit. It's going to be kind of, this is going to be tough. There's going to be a hard edge over here. Bearing is. To see how diminished that is. This is this is where it gets really tough to change hair color and stuff. So again, if you go off the rails a little bit, well, you can fix that. Cause see your your um. You're you're gonna have drift here, so there's no way you're gonna draw this like a robot. There's no freaking way. But this you can leave a little bit on the edge, but not. Too much. You can soften that edge too if you want. <laughs> All right, is that what we decided on to make blue? So really, not much else I, I can do. There, there are these ribbons down here, but you're not even going to see that on Instagram. I could probably just do it anyway. So you got these ribbons here, so I can go through the motions and do this as well. Oh, you're on the wrong one. Go. Is that stabilizer working for us? Uh, there was something else in chat. I'll get to it in a couple seconds. Gonna relax my hand. I, I feel it cramping up already. It means I'm not being loose enough with it. Kind of tough to see that edge. <laughs> it's a little forward, isn't it? I don't disagree with you. I would like to do that too. That that character that character has uh very nice slips for sure. She's really cute. Where was I? Down here. But yeah, hi there. I'm fighting cramps in my hand because uh, going a little bit too nuts with it right now. It's all right to go slow, but you know you're in awkward positions and uh, not really quite holding it right. So feeling it cramping up. So I gotta just gotta scale it back a little bit. This is stuff they might teach you in college and charge you way too much for it. They teach you on the wrong software too. Teach you on a software that's going to cost you hundreds of dollars when you decide to strike out on your own. If 
if they even teach you how to do that. It's a major downfalls of college is they'll, they'll teach you all of these skills, but they won't teach you to sell those skills. They won't teach you how to find employment, things like that, so. Uh, please don't sneeze. Wait. Yeah, I sneezed. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to get as much of it covered as I can. Really sitting awkward right now. Oh, let's give my hand a rest. Outer Linux is here too. Yeah, uh, don't. Um, It's the streaming thing's not really a burden for me anymore. Um, I just I just stream when I feel like it and stuff. Um, a lot of Twitch features break on me a lot, and uh, it gets a little frustrating. But it's not. Um, you know, I fa I've actually uh, I found I knew this was going to happen, but I found that. Uh, when I stop worrying about certain things about streaming, um, my creativity came back. So I'm feeling a lot better. Um, I know there there are people that love to watch me. I do appreciate you guys. Um, but I also know that like if my heart is not in streaming, it's not fair to you guys either. So, you know, so I figured today, well, you know, it's been a while since I streamed. I'll, I'll just go stream this and maybe I can, uh, it can help somebody out. But yeah, um, if I ever feel burdened by it, I'll just take a break, you know, and not worry about it. There's no, uh, there's no worries there. Oh, wow. Somebody was taught. In college using GIMP. <laughs> hmm. Hold on a second, I'm gonna need to blow my notes too. So just give me a sec. Okay. Yeah, um I I've been on almost an hour, haven't dropped a single frame today, so I, I do think it's more of a, a weekend thing. Like Saturday, Sunday. It's been really wet here lately too, and uh it's finally trying to get back to normal, whatever that means. Um, I know that weather does have a lot to do with it around here. Like uh, at work, um, it's been raining a while. Uh, that connection at work uh, becomes garbage as well. We joke about it, but it's, I mean, it's a real thing. You'd, you'd think that uh, the kind of infrastructure in certain parts of Florida would be uh, pretty good because of how many times we have down lines uh, due to storms and stuff, but uh, no. 
Let me just string up the old shit. Walk away. It's only when uh, somebody becomes really loud about it when they actually might consider looking at it. And then it takes some months to fix. But uh, it's been it's been going fairly well considering now. Based on a uh, Comcast end. So I, I still haven't switched uh, DNS servers. I figured I'd uh, give it one last try and see see where it goes. So. It's been uh, it's been doing really well lately. But I, I was I was kind of suspecting that uh, the issues I've had here lately on Twitch have been entirely because of Twitch, because other people have had similar problems lately. So. Let's see, I need to see here. Okay, yeah, that's just part of the background. I was looking at this here. Although I do need to go in and fix this. Fix that and I'll soften it up. Just like that. So let's let's make an assessment here. So what I might do with that bottom layer is uh, turn this up. Too much. Take a look at this. It's not really helping too much. Start messing around with the, the hue a little bit here. Do that. And from there, I can uh, I can employ some other other techniques here. It's so really what you're doing. What you're looking at is this here. So what I can do with this is um, stick with white. Like if I just kind of did this number here, I can do other things like change values. But you see how that kind of brightened it up a little bit? You don't necessarily want to use um, white, but uh, you can you can certainly lighten things up. You could do like a, let's see. Thinking of like a screen, yes, I think screen's gonna do the same thing. Pretty close to the same thing. We'll brighten it up a little bit. Too much. It's probably not. Good. Um. What else can I do? What did I do the last time? <laughs> Just bury them. They're they're buried in uh, new installations. They are all the power lines and stuff are buried. Um, but out here where there's old stuff, when you have a uh, a down line, they just put it up again. And let me tell you, it will never change. You'd have to level everything. <laughs> New installs only. 
Unless it's leveled, like what happened to Homestead. Oh, hmm, that's interesting. I've noticed with GIMP, uh, when I do, when I program stuff on uh, this, on these buttons here on the tablet, sometimes they don't work correctly. I'll, um, I'll assign the uh, uh, certain key bindings in GIMP to, uh, to buttons over here, and half of them don't fucking work. So I don't know if it's a GIMP thing or if it, it's actually the Huion driver, but uh, I've had a hard time with the driver working with uh, with things. Uh, Hugh is Hugh's basically uh, the the color value. So like you got you got uh, like a, a blue color here. And the hue, you're just you're you're changing. There, there's there's uh there's kind of a um like a color wheel of sorts here. And when you're changing the hue, you'll see uh that all these different colors in the wheel will change. So now it's like a greenish, and I can push it over to yellow. It, it's a little bit laggy when you move it, but. Uh, yeah, they're, they're they're color values, and you're working in uh, positive and negative numbers to uh, move that stuff around. No, that's actually an interesting color right there. Saturation is obviously uh, how much color is used. It's already at its full saturation, but you can uh, you can knock that back too. So I'm able to knock that back, and that's just the the, the lightness overall. So let's uh, reset this to zero. I kind of like this interesting. Uh, maybe we'll just go with this color instead. It pops a little bit more, and I can do I can do uh, like two or three colors in this too. Like I can leave the hair and the jewelry this purple color, and I can change the color of the eyes by uh, I can do a little magic over here too. It's Sometimes a little janky, sometimes it isn't. It, it depends on the color. But, um, like, I can go in here, for instance. Still set to screen. Okay. But I can go on to this layer, and I can add a color, and I can actually change it. So I just, like, kind of went back to a blue. If I want, I... If I go to a red over here, then it'll it'll change it to reddish color. But I don't know. Should I just stick with one color? I've been doing kind of a combination of the two. Um, like another thing that I've tried every once in a while is like I would knock this layer back to show some of the stuff that's underneath. So you see how things are kind of changing as I as I pull it back. So you can get some uh, neat little effects in here. Like if I go with something like this here. Because see, if I, if I knock that back and I just leave the color version over there, it lays color on these sections here. And like you get like a really neat effect with the eyes. Like another thing I could do is I could I could keep this over here and then I can start erasing this stuff or even adding a layer mask to this. Like I can I can erase some of this like a little bit. See how that changes? It, it's interesting some of the stuff you can do. <laughs> But I don't know, I kind of like this. Back to purple, or not really purple, but... Back to something... Um, not quite this, but similar. Like with what I did here, that's what I did with this. I knocked it back. I knocked the uh, the... 
underlying uh, black and white layer a little bit and some of the, the color started differentiating because I use the same color throughout. So that's kind of what we're getting over here. So with um with the colors I use here, it's a little bit difficult to let's see. Let me uh, let me catch up with the uh, chat. You gave up on uh, Studio sixty four. Yeah, exactly. It's a color likeness. I call it a value, but uh, like if you if you pull the blue away, then you'll you'll move towards. How do I say this? Oh, it's 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 hard to explain. <laughs> Yeah, saturation. Like zero saturation is zero color. They're they're values. They're uh, digital values. Um, and GIMP fifty is what the quote unquote true color is. And as you add value to it, you add more color to it. It becomes more vivid, I guess you could say. So. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. Um, <laughs> back before I started touching any of this, I th said the same thing to myself. I was like, oh, man, you know, if I could only do what these other guys do. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I uh, like I said, I, I started messing with uh, Paint Shop Pro for a while. Um, I never paid for it. But um, I messed around with that for a while. And that's really what got me... Uh, to to realize some of the stuff that I can do digitally, and um, after I kind of went legit, I said, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get an application and uh, I'll fly straight with it." So I looked at GIMP and oh, GIMP's interface back in the day. Uh, you think this is bad? This act this is actually pretty nice compared to when I first started with it. It's a default mode is you have a canvas and then you have windows that you move around separate from it. <laughs> like actual separate windows. <laughs> and I was constantly moving windows around to get crap out of the way and it didn't it was, it was just oh it was it was a nightmare. I couldn't stand it. I I griped about GIMP for a very long time until uh they made some uh, UI and UX improvements to it. I might um, let's see. What can I do with this here to darken that? So we gotta grab color picker and grab the color, manipulate it. So if I want to pull down to here just a little bit. I just want to see what it looks like. It's not really changing it too much. But again, you can get some neat little effects uh, going on with it too. Just don't uh, quite want the lips to be that bright. So we'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work out, we can switch it back. Not a big deal. Just I'll be real quick about it, so don't spend like a whole lot of time. I just wanna 
kind of see what it looks like. Pull back on it. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, we'll go with it. I'll employ the... Uh, well, actually, I don't really have to do that with this. So what I'm doing here is I'm painting on this layer. So if I switch this back to regular normal, you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just adding color to it. But uh, this this has already been um, alphaed out. So I actually don't have to worry about the edge. Unless I change the edge here on the... Uh, on the layer mask. All that, that uh, hard work was already done, so I can just go in and to lay the color down. Now, as for this here, because the, the reflection is obviously not going to be this color, um, I have to kick the saturation back down, so a couple of ways you can do that. So what I might do is just use uh, this way, just using the uh, the layer mask, and I'll do uh, I'll do layers of this stuff. So this needs a little bit more. This you just uh, just take all of it out. Did you, did you kind of go away from it? That uh, it's probably a little bit too much. Now you just have to remember to do the same thing on the other side. So you know, I'm just using. I'm not at 100% opacity here. I'm just I'm just doing passes of it. So this is. Um, I think I get more control doing this just by, um, how do I say it? It's like, um, it's like a building up lines. I'll turn it up all the way and I'll just get the inside of here. Just make sure this part's all done because it's obviously not going to have any color to it. Let's do that. So now she has somewhat of a regular eye catch going on there. So what else, uh, what else should I do here? Not really sure. Just pull it back a look at it for a second here and decide what to do with it. Let's see. <laughs> Catching up with chat. Mm, can't even afford a computer. Um, you could probably get a used one. Um, you really don't need a lot of uh, you, you don't need a lot of power uh, to do something like this, really. That I know people that they. I know I know somebody who uh, he he had his computer died a, a little while back, and uh, he didn't want to stop drawing or anything, so he ran out and he got himself like a hundred dollar Chromebook, and he continued to do stuff on the Chromebook, and he still. You're still able to do stuff, so 
Yeah, you don't really need... I have... I have a dual-core machine down here that's probably 11, 12 years old that will still... You can still do stuff in my paint and Krita and all that stuff. So, I was... I was actually, I was doing some uh, video editing with it, believe it or not. <laughs> so, until I, I was able to find a halfway stable version of uh, Caden Live for Windows, which uh, still crashes on random, but... <clears throat> you use your phone for everything. Um, there there are people that use uh, their phones for that stuff, too. There's, uh, there's a mobile version of uh, Sketchbook. Um, I was using it on my Nexus 7 for a while, and I have it on my iPad. So, if you have a phone that has a decent enough screen, you just get a, uh, get a, uh, you, know, you could, you could get away with using a stylus like this. And you can at least do sketching stuff with it. You can, you can do some simple stuff with it. I mean, if you want to get really fancy, you you're probably better off using a tablet, but, but you know, yeah, exactly. Like like what Linux is saying, you really don't need much uh, much power to run that stuff. Yeah. Nails. Um. Uh. For her nails, they're they're too dark to. Uh. I already gave it a shot. Her nails are are. Are a little bit too dark and I don't want to mess with that bottom layer too much it'll get uh, funky I already gave it a shot but uh, what can you do the the renderings were not originally intended to, to have this done so <laughs> but uh, what can you do um, I think we're about ready to um, Let's actually save this. Go ahead and save this. I think we're ready to merge it all together and start uh, doing effects. Other than this, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some. Uh, I'm not gonna need very much of vignette, but I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do some focus as well. So, so first, what we gotta do is apply this layer mask here. So that's applied. There, thank you. It applied. It took a little while. That was weird. Uh, so what I need to do is flatten the image. And uh, let's see. I'm gonna make. Uh, I'm probably gonna make two more copies of this. So. So what I'm gonna do here is let's see. I need to add. I'm gonna do the vignetting first. So. I need to add a layer use of foreground color, so black. I'm going to add another. Uh, yeah, we can add the layer mask now, white full opacity. This is going to be set to soft light again, so you can see how it adds a lot of contrast to it. I'm going to knock it back uh, quite a bit, actually, because it's got some dark elements to it. So maybe I'll pull it back to about 50%. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw an ellipse or, or an ellipse uh, selection. So I'm going to decide approximately where I want the vignetting to start. Because this, this is neat. What, what you do here is it's a really neat effect. So how about somewhere in there? So what you're going to do here, once you have that selected, uh, you're going to do a flood fill. Bam. See, now this is alpha out. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, apply some blur to it. So do a Gaussian blur. I'm going to start with 100. Probably going to go way higher than that. But see how it's softening out the circle there? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna go way up on this. I found I've usually gone up to about 500. So let's let's try 250 for for, for now. So that'll bring it up to 350. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so we're at 350 now. Let's 
150. That'll bring me up to 500. That should be okay. Knock this back a little bit more, 45% or so. So now you have a little bit of vignetting there. What happen if I d d drop this back up to about 60? Yeah, let's not actually stick with that instead. So you have this, and um, what I want to do as well is add some blur. So let's see. I think this one over here, I'm going to add another layer mask to it. I'm going to cut out another hole. Actually, let me blur this first. I'm gonna I'm gonna do another Gaussian blur here. So that's gonna be probably around uh, three or four. So thirty three. Go with three. See how much that blurs up. It's not too bad. Uh, maybe I will go five. Go five. All right, so now there's some nice soft focus over here. And uh, actually, do I want to do another effect first? Hmm. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do this instead first. I want to take a look at this and see how. I'm going to do a soft glow effect. It works for some of the characters, and other ones is really kind of eh. Let's take a look at it and see how. That's not too bad. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll do that. Um, we'll do that for the layer underneath too, because I'm gonna punch a hole here. So let's run another soft glow, and it it keeps the settings uh, per session. So do the same thing to that bottom layer, so that everything matches up. So I'm gonna punch another hole in here. Does uh, so really just want to focus on the face more than anything? So I go somewhere. that punch another hole in so you won't see anything right now but when I add the blur you'll you'll see the difference so I'm gonna add the blur now Gaussian blur five see how just the outside edge of that changed but it, it's a hard edge so I'm going to turn this, let's start with 250. Just kind of check it out. Yeah, I think, I think I'll turn that up to 500 like I did the other. Or, there are no hard and fast rules. You just kind of go with uh, what looks pretty good. So there's, there's your effect. So you have that. Uh, not the original. We'll have that ready to go. I'm going to export this. So what's this called? See, I actually don't need that anymore. Just these two. So I'm going to... Flatten the image. I'm going to add uh, add my signature to it. I know chat's been going. I, I apologize for not getting to it yet. I just want to keep the, the stream a little bit shorter than usual so I can put it up on YouTube.
So let's see, we got uh, that going. I need to resize it. That, kind of put it up out. No, don't do that. It's up somewhere in here. It's uh, it's gonna go on Instagram too, so I'm gonna wanna try to keep this somewhere nearby. Push it in a little bit. Turn out the soft light. No, hard light. It's legible. It's legible. So I'm gonna export this. JPEG. And I'll uh, I'll let uh Instagram do the uh one by one uh format, so that's that and this is the new one that's done. So we pull back cooperate with me. No, stop it. Go. There's your comparison right there. 